Hey guys, Avi here, and welcome back to our Swift series. In this video, we're going to be learning about one of the coolest concepts in programming, functions. After this lecture, guys, you'll be using functions everywhere. So let's get started. Now, what are functions? Functions are basically something that was created to make your life much, much easier. Instead of repeating code, instead of using the same code in multiple places, functions were created to be able to reuse the same code over and over again and not take up that much space. The real definition of a function is a set of statements organized together to perform a specific task. So let's say that I had a certain block of code. My block of code was print hello world and print, um, I don't know, something, how are you? Okay. Now the same code was, re was repeated here. It was repeated over here. It was repeated over here and over here. Now this works. Okay. But as you get, as you deal with more complicated code, as you begin to program more and more, your function or your code gets bigger, it gets larger. And these two statements might span a hundred. They might span 200. You want to make your code easy to understand and effective. And that's why functions were created. So what we're going to do is we're going to place this code in a function and then we'll call that function every time we use these two statements. So the way you create a function in Swift is you type func which is F U N C, which is short for, um, short form for function. And then you type the function name. So I'm going to call this first function because it's our first function. And now after that, you put two normal uh, shift nine, shift zero brackets. So func first function, and then you have to open and close your function. So curly braces to open and put a curly brace to close. And that is your function. Okay. So now let's go ahead and copy paste these two statements, command C or command X and paste them over here. And this is our very first function. All it does is if you ever call this function, it'll print out hello world and print out how are you. I'll talk about what you can do with these two brackets over here in just a second, but that is the basic format of a function. You have the func sort of keyword, which specifies like, Hey Swift, we're creating a function. We have our function name, we have the two brackets, and then we open and close with curly braces. So now to call a function, all you do is you type the function name, and then you put the two brackets after it. So now if I go ahead and run this over here, I'll go ahead and delete these three for now. Let's go ahead and run this first function. Hello world. How are you? Fantastic. So all we did is we took our code, we put it in a function and now I can call that code anywhere just by calling the first function name. So by doing this, I've saved myself a lot of space and my code is now a lot more effective. Okay. Right now our function is very basic. It's not taking any parameters. It's not returning anything. Let's change that up. The next thing we're going to do is create a function that adds two numbers together. So again, it's the same thing. First of all, you type func. Then the second thing you type is your function name. So for me, it's add. And now over here, things get interesting. We need to pass in two numbers that we're trying to add. Okay. To do that, we have to specify one, the type of variable and two, the variable name. So the way you do this in Swift is you say one, your variable name. So num one, and then what type it is. So our type is integer. Okay. So num one colon integer. Now our second variable is num two colon integer. Okay. So we have num one is an integer. Num two is an integer. And right now all we're doing is we're just printing out the sum. So print out print num one plus num two. Okay. That's it guys. All we did is we added two integer parameters, num one and num two, and we're printing out the sum. So now if I go ahead and call this add, if you notice when I type add, uh, okay. When you type add, you're going to go ahead and see that immediately Swift puts these filler placements. It has num one colon num two colon. And basically what it's saying is, Hey, specify the parameters this function takes. So I'm going to go ahead and say 10 for my first one number and five for my second number. And now hopefully I see 15 in the console. Let's give it a few seconds. Awesome. So that is our first function that uses parameters. Now in some languages, you do not have to specify the type. Okay. But with Swift, it's different with Swift. You have to mention the data type of your variable. So num one has to be an integer. Num two has to be an integer. If I try and if I try saying num two as five, I'm going to go ahead and get an error because it says that cannot convert value of type string to expected argument type integer. So always make sure that the parameters you pass into your function correlate to the type specified in your function parameter. Okay. So now we've understood how to add parameters to our function. The last thing we're learning with functions is returning something. So let's go ahead and create a multiply function where we multiply two numbers, but instead of printing it out, let's return it. 
So func multiply, multiply. Again, same concept. Num1 is an integer and num2 is an integer. Okay. Whoops, integer. And now comes a cool thing. So in most, some programming languages, you do not have to specify what you have to return. But with Swift, you need to mention what exactly are you returning. And the way you do that is you hit the dash key and then you hit the shift alligator sign. Okay. So the dash key and then the shift alligator sign, and then you specify what exactly you're returning. So for us, we're returning an integer because an integer multiplied by an integer will give us an integer. So I'm going to go ahead and say dash and then alligator sign. So basically this nice arrow key and then int, and now we put our brackets and then for our multiply itself, we're going to go ahead and say return num one times num two. If you guys remember from arithmetic operators, the multiply sign is shift eight, the star key and notice this return function. The return function, all it does is it tells our function that, Hey, whatever this is, make sure that we're returning it and that it's an integer. So whatever our return statement returns has to match the same sort of type as what we specified up top. Okay. So now that we have a multiply function, if you go ahead and say multiply num one, five, num two, three, you're going to notice that we're not going to see anything. And right now we have an error. And the reason for that is because we see 15 over here. That's because of the addition. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this. When you call this just like that, you're not going to get anything because we're returning something, but we're not printing it out. We're not storing that value. This function is going to give us a value, but we either have to store that value or print it out. So if I print out multiply num one, five and num two, three, I'm going to go ahead and see that, Hey, five times three is 15. So it gives me a few seconds and there we go. 15. And what I can also do is the real power of the return statement guys is to store it to a variable. So what you do is when you have these functions and you have these return statements, you say something like bar, um, uh, summation or bar num is equal to multiply and then 14 and three. So what you do is you store the functions return value into a variable, and then you can later do whatever you want with that variable. You can print it out. You can say something, etc. But I'm just showing you that, Hey, you can either print out the return statement or you can save it to a variable. Fantastic. So let's do a quick recap guys. Functions are great. After this lecture, I hope you guys use functions everywhere. You create a function by specifying the func keyword, then the name and then brackets. Okay. These two normal parentheses they used for parameters. So we specify parameters by saying the name of the parameter and then the type separated by commas, name of the parameter, then the type. And then to return a value in a function, you have to specify the type of that value by using the arrow key and then the specified type, and then use the return statement to actually return the value. Anyways, thanks for, so much for listening guys. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.